It's San Francisco in the 1970s, and it's the era of peace, love, and low riders. Our story starts here, in the mission at corner of 24th and Folsom. This is Phil. He will go on to become the king of coffee. Who's next? But more on that later. For now, he sells the country's cheapest milk, beer, and cigarettes. I have a mini supermarket. There's nothing I don't sell. This is Jacob, Phil's number one employee. Let me know when you're ready. Now? Okay. Not wanting to leave a legacy of a liquor store behind, Phil set his sights on something bigger. My friends, coffee came to my dream. I'm taking it to the moon. God bless. He set out on a mission to create the best product possible. Phil visited thousands of stores and consumed gallons of coffee. When I was working with beans, it's like a pharmacy. We used to count them one, two, three, four, five. Do this and now. Then I add another culture of coffee to it. Now, add another one. Now, I spend days and hours. Meet Tessa Saw, Phil's first blend. She took seven years to perfect. Seven years. Right there in that corner. Dang. Seven years, one blend. Because I want to do it right. Tesoro was so good, Phil experimented with more flavors. There was something for everybody, and cup by cup, Phil's coffee was born. My favorite flavor? Um, That's tough. I don't know. My favorite drink? So Jacob's Wonder Bar was the first coffee I ever had at Phil's. The Philharmonic. Organic Peru Light. The Dancing Water. Filtered Soul. It's a flavor profile of an ambrosia. Aromatic Arabic. Mint Mojito with an extra shot of deliciousness. Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. And when I used to sit in the coffee shop and sit, people stiff, don't talk. They're sitting in their table like a plant. I said, that's not what I want. I want to put a big community table, put them together. I'm going to go say, hi, George, how are you? This is Nancy. Nancy, this is George. And that's what I did. Coffee is something that's supposed to brighten your day and wake you up in the morning, inspire a conversation. And like I tell you, all my coffee shops is, you go visit your grandma. It's the best thing you ever had. Me encanta estar aquí. Pienso como que estoy en mi casa. I wrote a book at Phil's, and it's about Phil's. We got, got engaged, engaged at, at Phil's. Phil's. We started our business at Phil's. I like Phil's so much, I got a tattoo. Phil's coffee, ooh, coffee. We believe to deliver the best experience, you have to be able to be yourself. I get to serve someone a great cup of coffee every day, and I get to better someone's day. Why coffee? Why not coffee? Coffee is great. What we do is so special, and what we want to do is share this special experience with more people around the world. Our vision is to reinvent the coffee experience. We want to change the way people drink coffee. Look what we're going to do now. We're going to make it with real love. I believe I was born to make coffee. Just like people born to be a doctor. Frank Sinatra born to sing. I was born to make coffee. My dad and I started Phil's Coffee in 2003 in San Francisco, and uh, now we have 11 locations, and we're voted one of the best coffee shops in the US. I do this just to see the color, not for any other reason. He believed in making coffee without using machinery. Everything is handcrafted one cup at a time. I know so much about beans. I didn't know nothing. There's so many little things that need to be perfect that add up to something really great. Google Apps plays a role in that by making our lives easier for email, for chat, for documents. It took us about 25 to 35 minutes from start to finish, literally, to set everybody up. We created a new store checklist. We share the spreadsheet with all of the people involved, and it's helping us opening stores more efficiently. I know that it's going to support us not with just 10 stores or 11 stores, but a couple, a couple of thousand stores down the road. My dad never uses technology. He actually enjoys it and says it's really easy to use. You know, he said, "Look, I got an email today." <laughs> Our mission is to better people's day. We want them to walk out of our store happier with a damn good cup of coffee and a feeling of, wow, they really cared about me and my experience. People, when they like something, they take you to the moon, man. One day I'm gonna do coffee in the moon. <laughs> Phil.
Bella Phil's coffee immigrated to Alameda with his family at a very young age. He became passionate about coffee as a child and soon saw the business potential grow over the years. When he opened a grocery and liquor store in the Mission, he loved coffee so much that he worked on coffee research in his spare time. With a passion for people and coffee, he spent 25 years perfecting a variety of coffee blends. In pursuing his dreams, Phil converted his Mission store to the first Phil's Coffee location in 2003. Now with 30 locations in California and Washington, D.C., Phil attributes his success to having a unique approach to business, respect, and faith in loving what you do. Round of applause for Phil. All right, next up we have Carolyn Frey, who serves as Phil, Phil's Coffee's Chief People Officer, overseeing recruiting, training, HR, and their West Coast stores. Prior to Phil's, Carolyn was a Managing Director at the Corporate Executive Board, otherwise known as CEB, for 15 years. Over her career there, she led account management teams, managed the firm's largest client accounts, and relocated to San Francisco to open and lead the first office outside of DC. She was the general manager of the West Coast Market in the San Francisco office for the last seven years. CEB is a leading provider of research-based guidance and human capital analytics to Fortune 500 companies and beyond. Carolyn received many awards during her time at CEB, most notably a company-wide award for stewardship of exceptional talent out of 4,500 employees, a top coach award, and a company-wide award for innovation. Round of applause, please. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, we have Faith Sanko, who is the Dean of Phil's University. With a small team of designers, trainers, and communicators, they help define the Phil's culture through learning experiences. Prior to Phil's, Faith graduated from Cal Poly in Business Administration and Child Development. She's worked for, non for a nonprofit called the Lindsay Meyer Teen Institute, in the public se sector, more specifically the California Judicial Branch during Arnold Schwarzenegger's term. While this would have fulfilled her aspirations to be Leslie Nope, her career actually... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> actually led her to 10 years at Apple, building really cool things for their people in benefits, communications, retail training, and as one of the first members of Apple University. Round of applause for Faith, please. Yeah. So with that, I'll hand it off to the, to the Phil's team. I want to thank you all kindly for being here. And I want to thank Google for having us, Phil's Coffee, being here. You see, it seems like Phil's Coffee and Google and high-tech companies, we complement each other. As I look around, look, I see smart people, intelligent men, women with a smile. Look at that. How can I go wrong being, not being here? <laughs> so I want to tell you something about it. We came, as you see in the video, we came young. My family been here since the 1920s. When I was a little kid, I always loved coffee. In the old days, my grandma and the neighbors they used to get together and sit for two, three hours, socialize. And the only thing they have is coffee or tea. They didn't have tequila or iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> So I used to see them talk for two, three hours. Grandma or mom or somebody go make coffee. They never left the oven. They working with coffee. It's not put in the machine and bush and the shot of espresso come out and from there they make latte, cappuccino, all these fancy names. So coffee is uh, handcrafted that I learned when I was a kid. So I always like it because in the old days, people used to get together, see the deal, talk, communicate, over a cup of coffee. So I always liked coffee. So when I came to the United States, yeah, my family have a supermarket. Then I went to Alameda High School. As I graduated, we have summer vacation. Then the second two, three months, we went to college to register. Second day, I get up, I said, I don't want to go to college open store for me. So I opened a shop in 24th Street. I used to sell every item that a household used in their homes. 
and sell it at a reasonable price. I wasn't looking, I want to make 30%, 40%. I want to make 3 to 5%, but I want to rotate products. Instead, let's say, for example, I buy $10,000 worth of milk. I want to rotate that at least four times a month. So I'm spending 40000 At 5%, 12 months later, I'm making 60%. So that's how I used to do business. Milk, cigarette, liquor, beer, coffee, deli. There's nothing I don't sell. In the meantime, I used to, sell, I used to work in my coffee, the handcrafted, because I want to be different than any coffee shops. They're all good, God bless them all. There's business for everybody. But I want to capture the quality of the, our new society. You guys are new society. You guys smart, intelligent, you guys have class, you have taste, you don't like BS, you love quality, you walk to it, you drive to it, you even fly to it. <laughs> and you guys have money. So I figured I'm gonna open a coffee shop and uh, I visit over 1,100 coffee shops in 202 to see why people go there, what they're looking for, what their expectation. Is the employees happy? Does the owner come there? So I, some shops I rebeat, three beats, then I stop. So I wrote my own notes, because each one of them have something good about him. So I took one word from here, one word from here, but I wrote my own concept, how I'm gonna run my coffee shops. First and foremost is hospitality. That I see, that need that attention, and be sincere action, be loyal, be straight, reasonable price, quality products, which is, I conquer it. 25 years I worked at it. So I'm not worried about the coffee concept. Now I need to capture the quality clientele that no other businesses can capture. By hospitality, sincere action, treat them like you want to be treated. You greet them from the first 18 seconds as they walk in. And that's what happened to us. So we did a good job. We used to have one shop, me and my son. Now we have over 37 shops. We have a lot of markets, quality that we serve, like Whole Food, Molly Stone, William Sonoma, Leonardo and Derrico, Virgin America Airline, uh, Facebook, the headquarter, and all the other high-tech companies. Google was my first one to sell coffee from Middlefield. So these quality companies and quality people, they give me a name and reputation because our sincere action, I have people work for me. They are team members, family. One guy asked me, Phil, how many employees you have? I said, I didn't know what you're talking about. I didn't have employees. I have uh, I'm sorry, I should have done that a long time ago. He has employees and fans calling night and day. His wife. I didn't call her wife. I called her my bride for 36 years. <laughs> so I told him I didn't have employees. I have families. I have almost 800 to 1,000 families working for me. And the guy was a business major from Harvard. He goes, Jesus, I never heard that before. I visit a lot of high-tech companies, a lot of companies, and they say, I have 40,000 employees. You're the only one who said you have almost a 1,000 family. You impressed me, that's really great. I said, that's what we have. We have families working for us, and the quality of my clientele. The first day they are customers, the second day they become clientele. You guys, uh, my team and my clientele give us a name and reputation that only happened once in a lifetime. We now have money to buy it. We earn it from you guys, by the people. And you all put me in the cloud now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the cloud used to rain. <laughs> so, so when I wrote my concept before we start opening, we have no money to open. We have a journey, agenda. We have a dream that I'm going to conquer. And it's not about talking. The more people you have you talk to, they take you away from your concept. So I used to discuss things with my son. 
which is he's my oxygen, my best friend. We have lots of respect. And we used to talk about things, write things down, and we used to action the second day. With so little money I have, I let it breathe. Because that's how I learn if it's gonna work or not. By see, I want to tell you something. In the business world without money you can't do nothing. So if you keep it in the bank or under the mattress, you ain't gonna do nothing. It's dead meat. So I used to let my money work for me. So we grew, and uh, I just can't tell you how good it is. I could talk for 10 years. What happened to us only happened once in a lifetime. It's how you conduct, how you present yourself, the hospitality, the quality of the products. And uh, like I said, you all have class and taste. So you guys taking me to the moon. <laughs> it's, uh, there's a lot to say, but you must have something before you start company. Don't open company, have money, and from there you start to learn and getting better, better. We were better from the first day we opened because we know what we need to do. And we action people and we never been shy. I love people when I was a kid. Yeah. I feel I'm the most wealthiest man in this planet by how many people like me, respect me, trust me. Because three things we never did. I thank my parents. Cheat, steal, or lie. We never do that. And we're not trying to say sorry or I'm sorry I didn't have it. But we have the morals, the basics, the value. Money is the last thing in my life. I'm into health before what? My father wrote me a note in 1976. It says, let the life I lived speak for me. So I realized that after he passed away in 87, when we were going to the cemetery and so many cars behind, he has so much respect from his community, his family, his friends. That's when I learned, let the life speak for me. That's, uh, that means a lot. So that's my mission in life, business, families, work, talking to you guys. I want to learn from you all. You all have something good about yourself. You should all adore yourself. Never underestimate yourself. Because we all gonna. And the key in life is uh, God bless America. America has every culture you think of in this planet. So I have a blend. My, my, if you look in my shops, my menu says to Sora, Jacob, Wonder Bar, Ambrosia. Doesn't say espresso, double shot, latte, cappuccino. You go everywhere, latte, espresso, shot. We don't have that. We have names, each one has a story and it's real. My coffee has the least possible acid. My coffee is stronger than espresso. But like I said, there's business for everybody. God bless them all. And uh, I run my business in 10, like in the Bible, there's 10 commandments. I have 10 steps that I follow. And all my team in my company, in our company or our fraternity, I call it, uh, they have that symptoms and they follow. First one, we must have faith, love, and truth. And if you have a business, you run it in faith, love, and truth, you have customers. Customers become your clientele. Number four, you must respect them and treasure them. And that's me, they're telling me, wow, this is great. Because of my team members and the quality of my clientele, number six is telling me, go and grow. Go open here, open in my district, open in my city. And that's what happened. So number six is, I took action, I act. Number seven, I organize. Number eight, I said, we need managers. It doesn't mean I get recommended by someone. He said, oh, Phil, that's a good manager in Whole Foods. Why didn't you give him a job? No. Managers to me is when I hire people from the basement, and they're working with me, and I see them as doing a great job. They conduct, they have love. They are filled, they're not shy, they're relaxed, they focus. 
They get up with good thoughts, good mind. Do good that day, you can't go wrong. If I see that, that guy deserves to be either a supervisor, shift leader, or a manager, and of course I'm gonna pay him more. Because manager is big name and he wants more money. So I have that already planned for him. So I have my team members growing with me. And we have excellent people working for us. Uh, and the key is I trust them. I go sleep like a baby. I even think twice. And if once in a while we have a complaint because my business is like marriage, it's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you something. My house marriage is in the high 90s and my business in the real high, high 90s because we not shy from each other. We communicate, we talk. None of them, I walk in or the CEO walk in or Karen walk in or Faith walk in or Greg walk in. Oh my God, they hear what they have under their sleeve, what they have up their shoulder, you know what I'm saying? We have none of that. We walk in, hi Phil, hi Karen, you know? It's a great feeling. And I love what I do. I know forget where I came from. I put two to 300 miles in my car every day. I visit four or five shops uh, to see how can we become better tomorrow at what we do best, become excellent. Because people change, companies change, but I wanna guarantee you, take this to the bank, Phil's Coffee tomorrow become better at what we do best. And maybe we in it for life, we have love and passion for it, and uh, we have to grow. Let's all grow together. And there is nothing I can do for my city, my counties. Every shop I go to that community, I fit that community, I hire people from that community, and um, we raise revenue, we raise taxes, put people to work, less employment. We give them health, we give them dental, we give them vision, I give them 401k, I give them opportunity to invest in Phil's Coffee, and uh, it's delicious. I can't explain it to you how good it is. <laughs> so I could talk for a year, so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hand it to Caroline. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great to get a show of hands of how many Phil's fans we have in the room. Wow. <laughs> so you'll probably give us some good feedback across today. We want to save a lot of time for questions and answers, and you, you all were great about submitting questions in advance. So what we wanted to do, I mean, one of our biggest challenges of growing Phil's Coffee and such a pure mission is to bring on the right people and to train them effectively. So I, we got a lot of questions specific to our barista training. Barista, we like to call them artists. We actually have some of our team members here in the front row. They may be called on to ask questions. But what we thought is Faith could talk a little bit about how we structure training. What does that look like at Phil's? And then we'll open it up for questions. Um, and hopefully we'll address everything that was submitted in advance. I'm so thankful to be here um, and excited to hear your questions. Uh, I started at Phil's in April of 2015, so a little over a year ago, um, and it was six months of finding out, aren't you a small mom and pop shop and you want to open a university and what does that mean um, and you know, are you really in committed right, to investing in your people? Um, in the way that the, uh, Jacob, when I had spoken with him, had communicated with me. And so after talking with him and meeting the team and going to several shops, Berry Street, Middlefield, and Palo Alto, which is my favorite store, Cupertino, because obviously I used to work for a tech company near there, um, visited all of these stores and I, uh, I said, wow, is this for real? Right. Every single store, whether in San Francisco or in Sausalito or in Cupertino, felt the same, even though they were drastically different um, in look. And so oh. I, I was really intrigued about, well, is it in the hiring or is it in the training or what is it? Like, why are um, Phil's people so special and so kind? Um, and a lot of it has to do with the people we hire, for sure, um, hands down. And uh, 
there's definitely a set of things we look for, um, which makes training a lot easier. And it's really, really unique. Um, and the types of questions I think we've been asking folks um, and experiences for them to share with us, I think my, one of my favorite things that Phil says is, you know, interviews are a chance for you to look at people in the eye and really understand who they are. Um, and so when we bring these people on, they go through a 15-day um, training or onboarding or orientation, however way you want to say it. Um, but a lot of the training is not formal. Um, a lot of it really has to do with being immersed. And I'm seeing nodding heads here from our baristas. <laughs> um, and so they can vouch for me. Uh, and a lot of it is just being behind bar with your team. Um, and in my job, we have to figure out what are the parts that we engineer and design, and what are the parts that you don't want to engineer and design away, right? And I remember thinking, gosh, like, there's so much happening behind the bar, and there's so much happening with this customer, but so much of it has to do more with that person and how they connect, and less about the structure um, of how we do things. However, there's a very specific way we do things at Phil's. Um, every cup of coffee you have is personalized to your taste, which means you have to really know and understand what a person wants, and you need to be able to deliver it physically, right, behind bar. So um, it's a great two-week experience. A lot of it has to do with the relationship you build behind bar. Um, I would say another really unique thing about training is it levels the playing field. Um, I am Leslie Nope. I am a perfectionist. And when I got behind bar, I said, this is hard. <laughs> this is really, really um, hard work in the sense of like you really care about crafting something back there. But at the same time, you remember that in the end, like people are here because they want to see you and they want to have something delicious and they want to treat themselves, right? So it's a really um, interesting mix between, I guess, your left brain and your right brain, um, between your heart and your science. Um, and then ultimately, the help behind the bar is that's training. Um, being vulnerable and level setting of, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to make this, how, how can you help me? I think the team that I trained with really helped me out that week. And, and so now as people go through Phil's University, I stop by, I say hi, I say what day are you on? Because I can tell by where they are in their training. And um, I tell them, you know, if it wasn't for the team standing next to me, I wouldn't know as much as I did. So there's a lot of really interesting things um, that actually began with the training even before I got there. I just have the luxury of really understanding what that is and making sure that we hold to it no matter how big we get, right? Nice. Thank you. So maybe we'll turn it over to the audience yeah, for questions. Yeah. Training a little bit? Sure, yeah. Well, yeah. She said everything that I need to say, but the training came in. When we started doing it, Jacob was going to college, and the first day he came to me, he said, Dad, I'm not going to go to college. I said, uh-oh, we're in trouble now. <laughs> Your mom, you have two sisters, they're very educated. One is a doctor, one double business major. <laughs> Jacob, go talk to your mom, don't talk to me. <laughs> it took three months for the family to agree with him. He came to me, but Jacob was well-trained when he was four or five years old. I used to take him with me. I used to put a milk box for him, and he was working in the cash, and he was approaching the customer like he's 20, 25 years old. Hi, ma'am, how are you? <laughs> Anything else? Even take the back to the car. And he used to look straight in the eye to them and say, thank you. So he was well-trained. So when we decided to open more, and he agreed, the family, to work with me, I said, Jacob, we're going to open shops. He goes to me. Then I asked him, I said, what do you want out of Phil? You want to work sweep and mop six bucks an hour? He goes, no, Dad. I said, what do you want? He said, I want to grow. I said, grow? What does that mean? He said, like you trained me. You could go pick up shops, open them up. I will train the people the way you train me. And we opened one, the second, the third. As we open shops, they already, I already have team for you already trained to go to work tomorrow in case you open. 
And that's what happened. So we had the training well trained before. So to work for me, I look for three things in a person. The basics, the value, morals. He loves to work for Phil. He loves coffee. He wants to work. If he wants a job, go somewhere else. So when I meet them for training, I used to tell them, my name is Phil. What's your name? Mr. X, uh, I want you to be calm, settled, relaxed, focused, flexible. Don't be shy from me because you have something I want from you. And I'm willing to train you. So when I ask you a question, be honest with me. Because if I find out two, three months later, the door is open, you leave by yourself. So we hire, you fire yourself. So we have a concept, so from day one, as we grow. And as we grow, we hire these fine ladies. <laughs> and they know what we need, and uh, Jacob knows what I want. Sometimes I don't bother, I don't interfere. I go sit in meetings sometimes, just sit and watch. <laughs> so. Our job is well trained from day one. And like I said, tomorrow, next week, next month, we become better at what we do. We simplify things. And you have to be humble about it. You have to be humble in business. And the key to success is uh, greed is disaster, satisfy is success. That's what we into. And we're going to become better than accident and best to come. That's all I know. Thank you. Hi, thank you for coming. We really, this is like the most people I've ever seen in Comic-Con before, so it's pretty <laughs> impressive. Um, sort of a silly question. Are there any plans to sell the infamous orange cup in Phil's locations? I have a million people who would purchase about a <laughs> thousand of them. The orange cup. The, the infamous orange cup. Uh, so I can answer that one. No plans as of now. We're always open to ideas and feedback, so don't be shy about sending them along. So we'll take that back. I think one of the kind of key principles of how we operate is never lose sight of the core. So merchandise is important. We want, you know, we want folks wearing Phil's T-shirts, but really, um, we've got a lot on our plates, and it is very easy to get distracted. So I think my answer would be um, maybe. But right now, we have so much work to do to deliver our mission, which is looking you in the eye every day and delivering you exactly what you want and making you feel great so you can go off and solve the world's problems. <laughs> Thank you. I am a huge fan. You've actually ruined coffee for me because now I can't go anywhere else. Um, <laughs> my question to you is, you said every coffee name has a story. My favorite coffee is Filtered Soul. What is the story behind Filtered Soul? I get a big soul for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> filtered Soul is because it says, fill, and I use that filter, and everything comes from my soul. <laughs> filtered Soul, I made it like a dessert, afternoon dessert. Like after dinner, you want a piece of cake or cheesecake. So I made that for like a dessert drink, but it's a good drink. Especially if you mix it with honey and cream, it's a, it's a very satisfied drink. So filter soul is like you, you have life, you have soul in you. See. I first started drinking Phil's coffee in Berkeley. My favorite blend is uh, Tesora on chat. Um, I had a question. You mentioned that um, greed is disaster. Uh, over the past decade, many small business owners in the mission in San Francisco as a whole uh, has, have struggled monetarily. Um, many have been forced to sell their shops and or leave their homes. Uh, having started a successful business yourself in the mission, uh, what is your advice to small business owners in light of these changes? How can they be successful? See, in business, you can't be relaxed. You can't sit behind the counter, talk on the phone, listen, watching TV. You have to really stand erected to God, have a smile, greet the clientele, have the right products for them, display features right, reasonable price. Yeah. They all need help these days, because a lot of people are losing businesses, because first and foremost, yeah, their leases is out. Landlords want some more money. Uh, and they can't afford the new rent, so they leave. Or 
they have businesses and they treat people one or two, not the right way, they go outside, they give names, one become 10, 10 become 20, they stop going there. You have to be alert, courtesy, and treat people right. And uh, there's a lot of big issue these days with landlords and leases. They're not satisfied, they're greedy. I just cannot understand. In the 80s, 78, 80s, families used to come and rent homes. And after a while, young generation, single, they come to rent, share. Then all of a sudden, people rent four bedroom house or three bedroom house and they share with their friend. So they could afford to pay the rent. I just wonder how they could afford a one bedroom apartment in the mission for $4,200 a month. Mm -hmm. And the kitchen is like 1960. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what we have in these days is uh, either too much wealth up there from young generation, either they earn it from grandparents or parents pass away, left it for them, and they have so much, uh, they have no conscience. I don't know who they're trying to impress, but we have issues in that department. And uh, I don't know, this is me personal. I went through four or five cycles of up and down. I see the next cycle is gonna be the worst we ever had in our life history. Because our young generation didn't know how to struggle the sacrifice. And I see that coming. So, just, uh, Society change, cycle change, business change, uh, numbers change. You know, a long time ago, 40,000 was a lot of money. Now it's like five cents. All businesses must pay attention to their customers. I see a lot of big companies like Macy's, Gab's, all these closing, I don't know why. But something is happening because maybe Amazon is taking over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. I think just to add to that, I mean, we don't take a single relationship for granted, and our relationship with our customers and team members is our focus, but Phil really leads the way in carrying that through how we do business. And yes, you could argue we're growing to a bigger company and we're not the small corner store in the mission, but one of the things I think that's so unique that still happens is Phil and his son Jacob meet every landlord that we do business with. And that goes through to every single partner we have at Phil's, to our outside investments, to a vendor that provides, um, you know, helps us with napkins, that we look them in the eye and we really understand who they are as people and do they align with our values. And I think that's one of the unique things I would say and the advice I'd give to other businesses is, you know, focus on what's important um, and make sure you have those relationships, you understand, because when times get tough, those are the things that are going to carry you through. One more thing. Uh, like, like you're saying, a lot of people closing, landlord leases, stuff like that. Businesses take care of business. What happened to us is every shop that I get, either through a broker or developers or real estate, I must meet the owner. If I don't meet the owner, no deal. So I meet the owners, if we come eye to eye, that's why I told you business the old fashioned way is the best. If we meet eye to eye, we understand each other, whatever we do for each other, we can't go wrong. A handshake, sometimes I twist my mustache, like my grandpa, <laughs> this is my contract, but I make sure my daughter tomorrow, she, she's the master, um, agent for me, beside we have real estate, VIB, she'll send him LOI, the American way, we do business the American way. And let's say my option is off, which is I have many shops, options expired, phone call is done. We didn't have to go see lawyers, spend more money. So the key is we must meet owners because it's like marriage. I wanna be with you for life, we write leases, options, but in the meantime, he knows me and him, we're gonna be cemented for life. Mm -hmm. Because when I, go to, when I go to a special place, open a shop, God bless what he have, 
There's many people like him on buildings, have money, developers. But I tell him there's only one Phil's coffee. And you can't buy that twice. So when I come to your building, I'll put it in the map. I desire people to come to shop from my corner. I enhance all the businesses around me. Because I don't sell salads, I want just food. People coffee, they want salad, they go across the street. Slice of pizza, whatever. So I enhance all the businesses. Thus, I raise his property value. And I have over 37, no, maybe 33 landlords, some of them I have a couple of buildings with. They call me, Brother Phil, which building you like, I go buy for you to open the shop for you. <laughs> I'm serious. That's what happened to us. Uh, I went to Austin, Texas. I just came back last week. We saw 10 locations. One location I like where Google company is going there, high rise building. I told them I want the bottom mm. shop. I want to be in Google building. You see, I'm the owner and we like each other. So that's how things work. Do the right thing, be straight and honest. All my landlords love us. So I didn't know about other business, how they treat their landlords. I never call them I have problem. Landlords like that. So we are flower clientele. No we. <laughs> Phil, how do you think about expansion? Your sunset aspirations may lead to several thousand stores. Do you expect it to happen in the next year, in the next 20 years? And what challenge do you foresee to get you there? Is it high rent prices or other factors? I'll take the first stab at that. We'll see. We'll compare answers with Phil. I mean, I think, again, um, think about our mission, which is authenticity, quality. Um, and it's pretty easy for companies to go out there and open a 1,000 stores. There are a lot of companies in our history that have done that. What's most important to us is to do it right and to be welcomed by the community that we're in. We're creating community. Um, our mission is warmth and connection. So we don't want to ever impose ourselves um, on a community, and we want to do it. So it comes down to, one, A, real estate. We want the right real estate, the right location, the right community that we're going to be successful. We feel like for a reasonable degree of like likelihood, we can hire amazing team members, um, and that we can do it the right way. And so for us to date, that's been one store at a time, one customer at a time, one market at a time. And I think, um, I think as we get better at that, we will start to accelerate. And our vision is 1,000 stores. I don't think we'll get there in the next five years. Um, but we could. It all is kind of contingent on do we find the right people and the right places, and are we welcomed by that community? Because we never want to um, we never want to overstep and start to feel like, oh, we're that corporate company imposing, um, imposing fills on communities. You see, you asked me. Our shops, one shop is like a thousand shops. That's how we treat our shops. I could open everywhere because one time a guy said, Phil, why are you going to Washington DC? Different market, different animals, uh, different people. I said, I didn't know till I go take a visit, my friend. He said, why do you like Washington? I said, because it's small, like San Francisco. Six miles by six miles. Okay, let me go find out, i come back. So we flew. We look at locations. Second day, I signed two leases. And I get up in the morning, four or five o'clock, I walk two blocks. If there's any shops open, I walk and see how they talk, how they conduct. I, I, I'm, you see, anywhere I go, I'm relaxed. I fear no one. I don't go look around, oh, this is not my city. I feel like it's my city anywhere I go. So I walk around like a zigzag, see the merchant. Eight, nine o'clock, I go back to that location and I look up, I see God looking over me. I said, this is the place I'm gonna get, so let's meet the owner. So I got two places. So I came back, two weeks later, my friend called me up, he said, oh, what happened to Washington? I said, uh, I signed two leases, ready to open. He said, I told you, that." I said, there's no different, my friend. People sleep, eat, work, go out, enjoy. Same thing is here, my friend. Even, you know what? The smartest people in the world work in Washington. They're running the world. So I opened two shops. I find out Phil's Coffee could go anywhere in the planet, open, even in the mountain, camping, build a tent. People will come camping <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> so uh, the only reason I find out is I could go anywhere. It's all about destination. 
and everything is shipped in this country. There is no difference. So we're going to open shops next year, maybe this year six more. Next year, maybe 15 to 20. We're not hurry. We're, not, we're still young. We're still babies. We're not going nowhere. Like I told you, music is for life. Coffee is for life. So like Carol said, we hire the finest people who have basics, value, morals, respect. They love to work. I like their knowledge, but they have to follow our concept because I'm completely different than anybody in this planet. I'll make it easier for you. I spent 25 years. People spent 10 years, 12 years colleges. I spent 25 years. We have it all written down for 100 years from now. I have vision, I have a plant here. I drew it in my head how it's gonna be and it's working. It's working because I have a good, excellent team, people, culture, and um, like I said, it doesn't get hard, it gets easy for us, hard for somebody else. Mm -hmm. We are simplifying things. And things, if it work, we don't change. But we are humble, we like to listen to people's opinion, and we go back to our mind, we make decisions. Thank you, people. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, I had a, two supply chain questions. Uh, so the first is, <laughs> Phil's used to be a big favorite uh, here at Google in our, in our local micro kitchens. And I guess we no longer stock Phil's because uh, we don't have a ton of insight into the supply chain. So I was wondering between Google and Phil's, like, is there a way that we could bridge that gap? Oh, you could do that yesterday, my friend. Oh, yeah, I no can't. Problem. I can't. But you see, maybe they changed the marketing guy or the food guy or the guy who buy things. Maybe he has friends other places. We don't deal like this. We deal quality, service. I want to be cemented with you for life. I'm not after money. I want to give you quality. When you drink that cup of coffee, put the smile in your face, you might take another one to your office for later on. So uh, if you could... Make it happen. I'd like to have a coffee shop right here. <laughs> right in this corner. Sounds great. I don't need much. <laughs> yeah, Greg, our, um, who runs our wholesale business, right is here. here. He, he just had his first child, so he's a little sleep deprived, but wanted to be here. And partly, I mean, this, I don't know the reasons behind it, but that's one of the things we're actively working on because we're a company of transparency. And so our relationship all the way back to the farmer and that coffee bean is so important. So I feel pretty confident without knowing the details um, that we've probably come a long way since, um, since that conversation. And I think if, if anyone in this room can help us bridge that gap, we are, we are all ears. Yeah, is there anybody here from the food team that could talk to Greg? <laughs> Greg, hey. woo Greg! Um, yeah, we always kind of view business as a conversation, and I would love to open up that conversation. Um, the thing about our blends is they're a family secret. The people that are roasting the coffee uh, know what they're sourcing, but the people blending the coffee don't. Only the only two people that know are Phil and Jacob. Um, but with that, being that we want to have a conversation, we can discuss some stuff and, and find out kind of a happy medium. But we would love to work with you again. I mean, it was a pleasure working with you for three plus years, I think it was. Um, and it was very sad for us to see it go. Um, and we highly value our relationship with you. So. Um, Let's talk. Cool. Yeah, and my second question was, how many people know the secret sauce? And it sounds like <laughs> it's due. Right. Yeah, I think just to drill into that, I mean, we, you know, our blends are secret, and so we have an entire supply chain operation, our roasting plants in Oakland, and we have half a team that knows half the recipe, and we know another half of the team that knows the other half. And this guy here and his son Jacob are the only two people. And I, you know, there's a lot of ways that you know, food engineers and scientists could probably reverse engineer, but. You know, part of it is it's culture, it's trust. That's 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 the mystique and the beauty of Phil. So, um, so it's just it's just two, and we call that working in the curtain method. And it adds quite a bit of complexity, but our team, um, you know, our team values it. When you first started the coffee shop back in '03, what kind of challenges were you facing when you started this up, the mission? No challenge, because I've been there for 35 years. I built the name. You see, I chose San Francisco when I was 13 years old. Because seven mile by seven mile, if you do business the right way in the community, you become a community guy. You help out with so little we have. Uh, I have a good name, reputation. And during that time, I was working on coffee. So when I conquered my reputation, I said, now I'm going to do my coffee. See, it's not 
you see, to own a business, you have to be a good man, family man, honest man. We're recommended under good term, good report from the community, the people, and the city is small, so my name was all over, like perfume, Joe Malone. <laughs> I have no challenges. I'm my own. I am my own competition. I have no competition. I know pay attention to other coffee businesses, people, they have coffee shops. But I tell you, all these business people, they wish to, cop to capture clientele like us, like you guys. They're having a hard time. So mine comes from you guys because you guys give us name. You guys, you all have class and taste. You know where the quality is. And not I'm telling you this just to say it. It's for sure we have quality. And my beans, I used to count them like a pharmacy one other time. And I spent lots of years on that. So we different how we run our business by culture, the people, uh, make your day a better day, put the smile in your face as you're walking out from my shop or go sit in my, I was the first guy to put community table. Because this young generation, when they move to the city, they share rooms, they have no community table. They share bathrooms, showers. So Phil's Coffee become your community table. I have so many people met and they get married in my shops. That's the first time in the history in the US ever happened. <laughs> See, that's, that's something to be proud of. That's mean you have something good. And we in it for life, best to come. So I'm talking about Google. You guys were my first customers when I opened the middle field. I used to deliver the products to the warehouse. What's the other building a little bit closer north? Uh, the mountain, view. mountain View. I used to deliver to the warehouse. They used to have eight different companies. All of a sudden, ooh, only three. And what happened between us and you, it's not from outside. It's from your leadership or all you need to do now, all of you, send an email to the master <laughs> and tell him what you have done to us. Bring first coffee back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Let's give another round of applause.